So in the last video, we started to look at what actually happens between two objects during the actual interaction. Okay, and what we saw was that the momentum remains constant during the interaction. It remains constant. And we also saw that we have these acceleration spikes during the interaction. Okay. Now, what is interesting is, first of all, now we want to look at what happens to the kinetic energy of two interacting objects during the interaction. Recall that in an, remember, this is an elastic collision we're looking at. In an elastic collision, your relative velocity is uh, initial, is the same as your relative velocity final. Do you remember that? In an elastic collision. Remember, two objects colliding, their relative velocity before will be the same as the relative velocity afterwards in an elastic collision. Okay? Maybe your coefficient of restitution was 1, which means that you regain all of the, the energy that you kind of put in. It, there was a full restoration, restitution. Okay. Well, that's actually a, a very good segue into this. What we need to see here, though, is that during the interaction, even if it's an elastic collision, which means that the kinetic energy before, the total kinetic energy before, is equal to the total kinetic energy after. However, in a uh, during the interaction, the kinetic energy dips like this. It dips. And we want to see why is that the case. Right? So for momentum, it just remains constant during the interaction. But for kinetic energy, it, it changes. There's a change in the kinetic energy here. And we want to see why. Okay. So, recall, um, recall this, before I get to this diagram. Recall that, when does kinetic energy change? When do you have a delta K? You have a delta K when some of the kinetic energy is converted into internal energy, if you recall that. And when does that happen? This happens when you have some kind of change in state. The change in state. Right? So the object deforms or it changes temperature or something to that effect. Okay. Now, when, when did you have an inelastic collision? In an inelastic collision, right, we're just, we're just trying to paint the landscape. In an inelastic collision, we had the V12, the relative velocity, was not, the final relative velocity was not equal to the, the initial relative velocity. Okay. So, and in a totally inelastic collision, what did we have? A totally inelastic collision? we had that V12 final was zero. Okay, so I hope, hope you kind of seeing where I'm going with this, but probably not. When we have two objects that are colliding, okay, during interaction, during interaction, there's a point where both of them are going at the same speed. Car 2 is going at a certain speed, 0.4. Cart 1 is going at a certain speed. So during interaction, so before interaction, there is a relative velocity, before interaction. Then during interaction, cart 2 is slowing down, cart 1 is speeding up, and during this interaction, there's an instant where their vel relative velocity is zero. And what do we know about relative velocity being zero? It means you have a totally inelastic collision at that instant. Right? And if you've got a totally inelastic collision, it means that your kinetic energy has been converted into internal energy at that point. Okay? Okay? 
which means, this is the point, which means that your K, your kinetic energy, has dropped, has reduced at this point. Okay? So it's the same here. At that point, you've got... Oh, no, no. At that point there, you've got this... The velocities at that instant are both the same. Which means that at that point where both velocities are the same, the, the relative velocity is zero, which means that you've had a temporary, for, for an elastic collision, a temporary drop in your kinetic energy, but because this is an elastic collision, all of that um, energy which was converted to internal energy temporarily gets converted back into kinetic energy. Does that make sense? So let's have a look at, at this diagram. So imagine you've got a, a, a rubber ball, okay? All right, so you throw the ball against the wall, the ball deforms, okay, and then it bounces off. So at the state one, you've got a relative velocity between the ball and the wall, and so you've got a high kinetic energy, or you've got an, a certain amount of kinetic energy. But then the ball and the wall, they collide, and the ball, the ball starts like this, and then it hits the wall, and then it begins to deform, right? It begins to deform. It begins to squash and deform and build up potential energy. And then, and at this point, the relative velocity is zero. So it has reduced its kinetic energy at this instant. And then it bounces off and it regains all that kinetic energy again. So before and after, the relative velocities of an elastic collision are the same, but during the interaction, there's an instantaneous point, an instant, where the relative velocities are zero, which means that your kinetic energy uh, reduces during the interaction. Okay, I hope that's, that's making sense. So, to conclude about this, the characteristics of interaction, two objects are needed, of course. The momentum of a system of interacting objects is the same before, during, and after the interaction. Um, and then for the accelerations, the ratio of the x components of the accelerations of the interacting objects is the negative inverse ratio of their inertias. Okay, so remember we had something like this. M1 over M2 is the negative of delta what? V2 over delta V1. Do you recall this? This was your conservation of momentum. So this is pretty much saying exactly the same. It is the negative inverse ratio of the inertias. So you're going to have something like this, minus A2 over A1. Okay? Then finally, the system's kinetic energy changes during the interaction. Part of it is converted to some internal energy. Okay, guys, this is important. Right? This kinetic energy gets converted some part of it gets converted to internal energy. That's why your delta K drops. Your delta K, as you can see, because the, the ball, in this case, changes shape, some of that kinetic energy is converted into internal energy. Okay? But in an elastic collision, all of this converted energy in, right, gets regained after the collision. So all of the converted energy reappears as kinetic energy. Okay? However, in an inelastic collision, in an inelastic collision, right? Say now this was not an elastic collision like this. Say now this was an inelastic collision. Um, not 
all of that energy that was converted into internal energy is regained after afterwards okay so in a totally inelastic collision none of the converted kinetic energy is restored or reappears okay hope that makes sense